Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as the Kingdom of France. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. Um, but we've got to talk about the rise of the anti or the socialist anti-colonial committee. Our counterintelligence specialists have noted a recent surge of syndicalist activity in our country. We know that the Communist of France together with the Union of Britain has established the Anti-Colonial Committee in the International, which until recently has been practically dead, this committee, with the help of uh Sali Mohammed Amerien bin Amerzain, a traitor of the Algerian people, is coordinating the efforts made by the syndicalists in supporting anti-colonial sentiments in our French Africa. The syndicalist powers have sent significant amounts of weapons and materials to support the native rebels. They've also opened a few train camps in the southernmost part of the country. While the more radical politicians in our country believe that nothing will come out of this, our generals warn us that they have to be very or wary, worrying development. Um, so we're doing all right. It's March 24th, 1937, and the American Civil War has just kicked off. Defense, breakthrough, um, soft stack, production efficiency gain, more production cost. Who? Can we do that? Probably not. Who? Boop, 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 boop. We'll do something like that. I don't know. And yeah, that's fine. Do we have another one? The last one tier breaks for you. Look at that. Yep, so they're killing each other over here now. That's cool. We should probably get involved a little bit, perhaps. Uh, honestly, what we're going to need is gives us more fuel gain, gives us a little more division limit, gives us better construction speed for building factories, and better consumer goods, because we want to build La Moma Piaf. Edith Gassion, better known as La Moma Piaf, meaning the little sparrow in Parisian slang, has recently become a sensation in France on both sides of the Mediterranean. Born during the Valkyrie to a failed singer on a street acrobat, Raised in a brothel for most of her childhood in the Tormented Revolution, she was nonetheless blessed with an incredible voice, her harsh life has given her a haunting depth and sensibility. Having started her career as a street singer, she quickly started performing in cabarets and workers' clubs, singing about working class life and struggle. Soon, she was on the radio and inevitably, her songs would cross the sea and the embargo. Her records are being played in the packed clubs of Algiers as Frenchmen let the nostalgia for their homeland be soothed by a piaf striking Parisian accent and chills the atmosphere of the shady parts of the City of Lights. Some find her songs scandalous, while others insist that these songs are coded in syndicalist propaganda, but the government is doing nothing to stop the spread of her records and is rumored that she has admirers in highest places, amusingly. She has proven equally controversial in the commune. There, she has been accused of encouraging bourgeois democ uh, degeneracy and singing counter-revolutionary propaganda about the living conditions of the proletariat. Though, thankfully, these complaints fall on equally deaf ears. Maybe we'll hear her perform live someday. Maybe. And we're still up with some more cities, because we could use more cities and whatnot. We've got some combos to go through, so um, some suggestions, make an infantry template, basically 27 combo with 9 infantry battalions, 3 artillery battalions, support already, engineers, anti-air, um, upgrade intelligence agency with psychological warfare, which I almost never choose, but whoever, to the person that recommended this, I didn't realize that. You can get less damage to garrisons, as well as more compliance growth speed. You know, I've not been looking very closely at normal-ish Hoi 4 mods and just base game as well. This is actually very good, so we should probably grab that one. That's actually very good. Um, and this person also recommends anytime we get an event about La Cagoule, we're rejecting help from them so we don't have any trouble later on. That sounds pretty smart, but we'll see what happens. Another person asks, am I planning on playing the Thousand Week Reich mod anytime soon at the time of this recording? Because apparently it just got updated. Uh, maybe, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, armored trains, war austerity, we don't really need armored trains. Field uh, you know, honestly, we might need some field hospitals. Women's suffrage, ooh. Defense, soft stack reliability. Uh, sure, why not? Gain. Oh, the issue of women's suffrage has been a contentious one in French politics for a long while. At the revolution, women were considered passive citizens, a category shared with the children and domestics. In other words, citizens who were inherently under the influence of another, and as such cannot be trusted with the right to vote. In 1848, when the Second Republic was established and universal suffrage was declared, women were excluded from such universality. Idem when a Third Republic was declared in 1870. Though there are sympathies among the more progressive Republicans for the cause of women's suffrage, they still considered that the vote of the woman would be used against a fragile republic. Furthermore, the Parti Radical, dominating French politics, was well known for its deep anti-clericalism, doubted the independence of women from the church, a concern that was exacerbated in the years since the exile, as Pope Benedict XV gave support for women's suffrage in 1919. The Republic then at its most vulnerable could not afford the risk of women voting along either her, their husband's will or worse, the church's. Charles Maurras has long defended in Action Francaise the right of women to vote. Indeed, they had the right in France for centuries before the Revolution. 
being called to vote in parish, communal or even regional assemblies, and participating as equals in urban air assemblies if they were widowed, for example. And as the church has officially taken a position on the matter, now that we finally freed France from the grasp of the uh, Gais, it's a duty to right the wrongs committed by the Republicans. As such, a royal decree has been published, declaring that from now on, women should have the right and duty to participate in the politics. Poor toots. Nothing like national populism to give women the right to vote. Um, someone else says, uh, please, when you play this next, please play as Napoleon. Maybe. Someone says, plays the Vietnam Mercenary Republic in Kaiser Redux. That sounds amazing. Or awesome. The Vietnam Mercenary Republic. And someone says, can you play as Madrazo and Tino after this? Eventually. I, I, I wanted a big old break between, um, this camp, the last campaign I played in Tino, the time this recording, to everything else, pretty much. So they're in the Entente. We're on the Entente. It's probably good to... They're literally in the Entente. They're not in the war, though. Um... Definitely don't want to help them out though. Let's see, you guys, volunteers from the Reich's Pact. Do we support the feds? Market access, embargoing others, embargo, buying equipment. Or do they support the Pacific Command? Hmm, they're market liberals, huh? Because I don't mind sending some volunteers if we could. We have plus 20 relations with them. We have no relations with these guys. No relations. We can send one guy over. We do have a mountaineer. And there's a lot of mountains in the immediate area. Yeah, let's see what happens. If we get something good out of this, great. If not, oh well. So I read this last time a large army. If you don't need this, please go ahead. Boop. Boop. Because I do want to race to get weekly war support would be nice and broad offenses for that defense. That's very strong. So if we could land on the Metropole, or, you know, uh, we could probably defend a position no matter what. No guarantee, but of course I do want to make sure we have a good enough air force for that as well. Um, this does not look good. I want to attack here, or defend at the very least. Oh, it's like a lot of warfare looks pretty good. Defense. As long as we get experience, that's all I care about. Uh, politically connected. I don't like politically connected. Politically connected. Bunzinger. There we go. I don't even know what we have on this template. Also, I did throw on this overwhelming firepower so we get more experience in artillery and whatnot. Because these guys do have a place in our army. Force cooperation. I did this one first because we can start working against more ex uh, uh, air and army XP strength. And the navy would be bad, but large armies next. It's not bad. It helps out. More entrenchment is good too. Keep building this up if we can. Just get that experience. And artillery is going to help out a lot too. Good. Radio detection is good. It's 1937 still. Um, as much as we can. Excavation is good. A classical curriculum. With Morassa's government having committed to promote a revival of classical literature and ideals, it is essential that the youth learn these principles as such. A new education law has been passed, <clears throat> establishing a new curriculum for students of France from now on. Uh, classical languages, philosophy, and history will be greatly elevated in the curriculum and become compulsory for every child. By instilling in the youth the values of the ancient world will doubtlessly restore its greatness. There's nothing better to learn. Absolutely. Expand resistance contacts. More organization is always good. Decryption I like. Gain in some intel. We're going to grab this one next. Coordinate operations. Without the three branches of the military acting in unison, we have little hope of managing a well-organized campaign as such. The officer corps of the Army, Navy, and Air Force will be integrated together and ensure that the officers from one branch must consult with their counterparts from the others and arrange any necessary supporting operations before making new plans. And the 20th anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima. Exactly 20 years ago today. In 1917, in the small Portuguese village of Fatima, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to the three shepherded children, or shepherd children, over the course of five months. In these visitations, the Virgin will share with the children everything from visions of hell to prophecies of the future. One of these prophecies foretold the fall of the eldest daughter of the church, France, to the syndicalist menace. In the same vision, the Mother of God uh, warned that unless the Holy Father, in unison with all bishops of the world, consecrated France with her immaculate heart, the errors of France would spread throughout the world. No point. In the 20 years since these alleged visit visages of the Mother of God, all that she foretold has come to pass. 
Um, putting the rise of the commune to the spreading of cynicism throughout the world by the agents of Red France. Um, oh, not a word is spoken has been un yet untrue. With this being the case, Our Lady of Fatima has gathered quite the cult following among the exile populace. Following a request to do penance and pray the rosary daily, sort of legions of Mary have formed around the nation, dedicated to spreading both the rosary and the message of Fatima. Alongside this, bishops and archbishops whom followed us in exile formed a small grouping that yearly asked the Holy Father to make the consecration, but this has yet to occur. Regardless, the 13th of May each year is home to the great festivals and sol most solemn prayer to Our Lady, asking her to do all in her power to help us return home when the time is right. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Man, I'm not doing this in a long time. Uh, I want trucks. There are no trucks. Okay. Well, I guess I'll buy guns then. 900's not worth much, but... Just gets all in one delivery. That's fine. Oh, you're the only one defending here. That is unique, but we're in the mountains, so we should be okay. Learn Alphonse. Anything here? Hellfighter? He's already a Hellfighter. Improvisation expert. Entrenchment speed plus 50% is not bad. Uh, let's save it. We might use it. We might not. Passive defense. Great. Uh, I want to keep building our civvies up, too. Building us up, please. Alright, so what do we have next? Military command. Um, artillery would be good. I mean, we're really focused on artillery. I wouldn't mind more air stuff. Air superiority. We can't go to war economy. Okay, what's down here? Industrial concerns. Research speed. Um, I might go with construction. It's already 15%. It's not a huge amount, but it's a decent amount. Or do get more stuff here. I like them capital ships a lot. Eh, I think we might just stick with artillery barrage. We're already using artillery, it's not much. We're using it a little bit at least. You can have support the attack too. We don't have a lot of manpower. But we'll do what we can in different locations. Ooh. Spain is falling. Nice. Pretty normal. Get out here. News from Corsica. This morning, a war memorial containing soil from the mainland was inaugurated on a beach near Ajaccio, or Ajaccio. It was dedicated to the tens of thousands of Corsicans who gave their life for France during the Valkyrie and subsequent civil war. Since the revolution, the island has been an incredibly important bastion for us. Indeed, it's so close to the commune that its shores can be seen on a clear day, while Red Italy is not far away, either. As such, it's become a focal point for the Mediterranean strategy of the Entente, having quickly been transformed into a major naval and airbase from which our ships patrol as close as possible to the mainland, with tense face-offs with international ships occurring every other week. Any liberation effort will have to start here. And much of the intelligence and reconnaissance work done in France and Italy is coordinated from Bastia and Acaccio. It was also there that first waves of exiles landed, and though most moved on to Algeria, many stayed, creating a population and economic boost that paired with the military buildup that has revitalized the island, despite perpetual tension as war looms. Though there's no longer a stream of refugees like in the early days of the commune, there's still a constant trickle of dissidents making their way to our shores, each given a hero's welcome but carefully interrogated. Finally, organized crime, already an issue before the war, has become a mainstay of island life. Many destitute veterans and refugees turned to crime. The presence of so many soldiers made gambling and prostitution booming businesses, and the Corsican Mafia, under the leadership of men like Paul the Emperor Carbone, himself a veteran, further thrived on the smuggling of goods and people in and out of the metropole. The authorities, however, turned a blind eye to this, as the Mafia has proved to be an incredibly useful network for informants within the commune, all the while attending to the baser needs of infantrymen and officers alike. What a lovely island. I don't really care for any of these guys. Rally the Kingdom. We don't like these guys. I don't know which one we want to support. All I know is that we definitely need to build this place too. Did I convert you all over? I did already. Whoops. No, well, because we need some people to. We absolutely have to defend this area because we're going to launch from here into there. Tunis. I, mean, I like Tunis and all, but like this is more important. Eventually we'll build up some radar, we'll build up air bases, we'll build up all sorts of stuff here too. Yeah. Because we will have to. Oh, support the Carlists. The only path Spain has to being made righteous once more. The Portuguese have convinced us this is the right faction to back. I'm sure to support them with the joint alliance should they succeed. And legitimate government. The only way for Spain to true achieve peace and democracy is through the true government of the Bourbons prevailing. Peace and democracy. But well, we don't want that. 
guess we couldn't spark the Garlos then. I could be doing this wrong, but... We have Marines, but they're only 8 combat width. We have these guys, 14 combat width. And then we've got you. It might be best just to send an infantry division. Up all, all lines. It'd be really good for uh, a Greek win referendum. We could help out. Oh, both guys looking pretty good. Nice and thick. Now we're looking over in America. We are literally only the ones holding the line here. That is not good. This is easy for us to get encircled. That is really bad. Ultra bad. Henri Garreau. So why can't I move this here? Am I allowed to throw planes over here? No. Down with Marianne. Marianne was a perfect symbol of the Republic, vulgar, denuded, looking like a little more than a prostitute or a beggar, she embodied the mediocrity of the Republican regime. Chosen under the short-lived Second Republic, her representation became systematic under the Third, appearing more in uh, public buildings, statues, stamps, and all things related to the state. But now, freed from the Republican shackles, France shall no longer be represented by a mere peasant. No longer is the people drinking the rotten milk from the deceased Republican teat. Busts and town halls have been taken down, statues brought down and destroyed by the chair and Camelot. Instead, will build symbols of the true France, such as statues of King Saint Louis and Jean, Saint Jean d'Arc, or representations of royal lilies and Gaelic roster. As to the official personification of our nation, we simply have to look for the, to the past for inspiration. France has traditionally been represented as a woman in a blue cloak with golden fleur de lace, armed or brandishing the royal hand of justice, often wearing a golden crown or a helmet, sometimes armored. A much more fitting symbol for the reborn kingdom. Soon enough, the Republic will only be a bad memory. So, I'll we'll head down. Where are we at? Oh, you're not moving. Supply is probably really bad then. All throughout here. Come down here. Good. And spend resistance contacts. Within the Metropole, the communists are still far from unanimously uh, accepted. Especially in, especially in traditional Catholic rural areas, sizable resistance movements uh, still persist in the parts of the commune, and although we've always tried to support them, it is so far proven insufficient to make such a difference, or much difference, to their plight. Now, however, Darlan is committed to deepen our backing of these valiant men, ordering numerous more agents to be sent to the commune, who can coordinate their operations with the resistance groups, and assure they answer to Algiers. Louis Blériot dies. Uh, this guy, born in 1872, engineer, inventor, and pioneer, a French aviation who died in cardiac arrest, of cardiac arrest, uh, in his Algiers Villa, only, only at the age of 64. Fascinated with the idea of flying and inspired by, inspired by the prototypes of French engineer Clement Adair and the successes of the Wright brothers, Blairot put the profits of his automobile parts business towards the creation of flying machines, first encountering so many failures that the press derisively named him the king of crashing. He eventually achieved worldwide fame and recognition for being the first to cross the channel in an airplane in 1909 in only 37 minutes. A living legend of aviation, even being attributed to the first pilot's license. 
He created a successful firm building his ever-improving designs. With the Great War, he specialized in light reconnaissance planes, his company producing eventually more than 10,000 planes for the French Army. At the outbreak of the revolution, Blériot fled uh, Algeria like so many others and successfully re-implemented his business, Blériot Aeronautique, and uh, the Marshall encouraged research and development any field with any potential to help the coming war effort, eventually running as a candidate for the Parti Radical. Following his death, the government has put only on a statement, honoring his contribution to the field of aviation and to the war effort, as well as his resilience facing his early setback, calling him an example to all Frenchmen in these difficult times. The creation of a Louis Blériot medal to be awarded to uh, record setters in speed, altitude, distance, and land aircraft was also announced. Long live the Roy de la Casse. You guys attacking? Yeah, you might be able to do there. A little bit of a bush war, eh? They're real trying to get up there. We've been hit. One of the socialist terrorist cells operating in countries has pulled off a vicious act of sabotage. Thankfully, nobody died, but several facilities were destroyed. That's not safe from collapse. Ooh. Chilean Argentinian war. Well, people are killing each other all over the place here, aren't they? No, well, we're not going to. We can't afford to leave here. Um, so there's that. Now we're doing over here. They're still attacking. By golly, good gene. We need more XP. Get more marine stuff, or is there more naval stuff here? Naval reform, refitting speed. Lightship cost is not bad. Positioning, I like positioning the most. 20% attack. Uh, I don't know. Might wait for the naval auction. Good. More fuel per oil is always handy. Yeah, I'm not gonna attack there. Like that's crazy. And I mean, there might be militia, but still, you're fighting over a river. Emergency conversion speed. Being very particular as to what we research. Light tanks. Fast tanks. Less armor. I don't like that. Yeah. And then uh, patriotic appeals. Yeah, weekly war sport. As we seek to attract more recruits for Dalan's envisaged larger navy army, it is a, a vital that we appeal to the common patriotism of every decent Frenchman, reminding the people at every opportunity that their French brothers and sisters are subjected to socialist tyranny with their faith and culture suppressed. It. Only a new crusade of free France can change this one which requires the commitment, commitment of every citizen. Um, even more consumer goods? Yeah, probably. Alright, if you can actually win like this... Maybe. Build, 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 build. Learn, 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 learn. Good. And then I want to rule the skies to get here. Strength of the Navy. If anything, the Navy is the force we need the most in our current situation. As without it, we have no hope of even landing in the commune. Darlan himself, that an admiral, knows this all too well, with many of his loyalists also coming from the Navy. As such, it is vital that we increase the funding for the Navy and increase the representation of naval officers in the general staff. Murder rocks a gas buzz. He's only on his way to see the Ramadan Mosque. Hey, they made an actual encirclement. Look at that. Uh, Ma Mahmoud Bandali, who was surrounded by two men and stabbed in the heart, dying on the spot. The two perpetrators were caught after a quick investigation and confessed to the murder, justifying their actions by saying that Mufti had acted against the Islamic faith and was little more than a puppet of the infidels. Appointed by the colonial authorities first as Imam, then as a Mufti, unpopular and frequently brazenly critical of even mild reformist talk, Bendali had many powerful enemies. After a rough interrogation session, the murderer confessed to being a merely a pawn in the greater scheme, offering thousands of francs, francs to kill the Imam by the true mastermind behind the crime, a prominent member of the reformist association of Algerian Muslim ulema, Tayyib El Okbi. Already banned from preaching in mosques by colonial authorities, the man had been under police surveillance for some time, suspected of conspiring against the state under the pretense of religious reform. He was immediately arrested in his waiting trial. Oh, look, they actually ate up, ate up New England too, that's not good. However, many Algerians and some Frenchmen believe this is a conspiracy, and that El Okbi was falsely implicated in this affair by colonial police, eager to have such an inconvenience disappear. Whether the accusation is true or not, this case is quickly turning to an embarrassment. We could drop charges against El Okbi, somewhat loosening facing but preventing any further unrest, possibly getting an ally within the association, but or could keep him in jail, getting rid of a prominent and dignified leader, and sowing dissent among the Illumines. Freedom clear of the murder was trying to shift the blame. We get more than enough stability, eventually, so I'm not worried about the stability part. 
Good job, guys. Can you guys actually do this? You might be able to. Becoming energy leader is good. Ooh, and the Belgrade Pock is firing. Fourth Balkan War. Yay. How much artillery do we have? Never enough. That's right. And we're gonna slap on more when we can. Well, 20. Crap. It won't let me slap it on for some reason. I do not understand why. Switzerland recognizes the commune. They received word as a part of the negotiated deal with the commune of France, the Swiss government has officially recognized the commune of France as a legitimate French government. This leaves us in an awkward position as the Swiss government previously recognized us as a sole legitimate government of France. We will not forget the slight. France stop. Guy, in a world where the acquis acquisition uh, and preservation of information is paramount. Uh, we have every... Uh, we, every power worthy of the name, needs a spy service worthy of the name. In France, we have the Second Bureau, or Armed Forces Intelligence Service, made of equally brave and dedicated agents and intelligence service uh, personnel, now, including one of our finest agents, Hubert Bonnesieur de la Baffe, known by his codename OSS-117. Considered France's top spy, he has led expeditions all over the globe, from Egypt and Middle Africa, via Brazil, Switzerland, and China, under aliases as varied as Nouvelle uh, Flantier, Lucien Bramer, and Emile Cousin, extremely patriotic and devoted to his country. Hubert is very close to Charles de Gaulle, who is a real-life model for him, and OSS-117 often wonders what the general would have done in the different situations they found themselves in. Despite his reputation, the closest to Hubert knows that this personality is more eccentric than that of a simple, dedicated agent. Indeed, Hubert is known as a ladies' man, with undeniable charm, despite his macho demeanor and controversial views on non-French cultures. Notably that all Germans are just as bad as von Goring and his Souveranistin. Souveranistin. But even whispers that many of the successes of his missions are due to the incredible luck and numerous misunderstandings rather than genuine talent. OSS-117, Bovu Sevilla. Very nice. Well, they're winning. You might as well help out, I guess. They're only militia. Flag. Certify control. Good. Nice job, guys. If you want to help out here, I guess. You might say we would have win. I'm worried about the south, though. They're looking pretty thin. If they could cut them off here and take out the rest of New England, that would actually probably be pretty darn good. So ahead of time. Mm -hmm. The rectifier. I never use this stuff. Anything for naval stuff? Yeah, probably naval stuff. A legionnaire. The latest movie starring comedic superstar Ferdinand, Ferdinand a legionnaire has been, like almost everything else the actor touches, a complete success. A matter of physical a comedy and slapstick, adding to a, ta a talent for singing, his movies generally feature few humorous songs that then prove to be successes in their own right. He's often been compared to American actor Charlie Chaplin. This time the actor plays Ferdinand, Fernand, a hand-picked husband who, after getting knocked out, wakes up in a caravan heading towards the Algerian interior. His identity, paper stolen, and replaced by new ones. He's now another man, a new volunteer in the French Foreign Legion. Incapable of explaining the situation to his officer, Fernand is called to fight some unruly tribe deep out, down in the south in the Sahara Desert. And despite early mishaps, he quickly finds military life much more enjoyable than his marriage, especially much less disciplined. Now, truly, he's a whole new man. He's eventually tracked down by his wife when instead chooses to relance under his real name, uh, becoming a veritable hero and eventually being awarded the Legion of Honor. The humorous tale has proven particularly popular among veterans. Fernando did it again! And we're getting weekly war sport. Yes, we are. Fantastic. Hold out, Andre. Actually, he's not here, anyways. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much are we going to be out? Quite a bit. We're making enough guns now, which is good. Uh, we need more trucks. We can buy trucks later on. We might need a little more arty, but I really want more planes. Artillery trucks. Let's get the artillery for now. 
on your national day since 1880. The national day has been set on the 14th of July. The left would generally consider the day as commemorating the 1789 storming of the Bastille, while the right would choose to commemorate the fast feast of uh, the Federation. A celebration that took place only one year later, and that the town was considered as many by the end of political instability. I think it was before. Well, I'll keep going, I guess. The Republic could not afford to alienate either side, and such never gave an official explanation. Either way, the celebration of either a revolutionary bloodshed or constitutional monarchy is a wildly inadequate for the restored regime. So France did not have an official day prior to the revolution, and as such, three propositions were brought before the king. The feast day of Saint Louis, King of France, on the 25th of August, has been the occasion for popular celebrations in honor of the king and is the closest to the ancient regime had to a national day. However, since 1922, two saints have been declared by the papacy to be the primary patron saints of France, Our Lady Honor Assumption, the 15th of August, as she has been traditionally considered Regnum Galliae, Queen of France, and the Saint Jean d'Arc. Sent by God to free France, her feast day falling on the 30th of May, when a martyr took place. What day shall the king choose as a national holiday? Like under the pious King Saint Louis, the monarchy will leave France glory. For ladies' protection, Regnum Galilei Marie, ora pro nobis. Like the Pusia, we must hear God's call to save France. We'll do this one, because we can get wars for and stability anyway, so I'm not so worried about that stuff. The Lurking Mystics. Oh, hello. Kings, uh, no, we're good. One of the more controversial aspects of the Action Francais is a continued relationship with some of its members of the occultism. For many reactionary Catholics, this relationship is evident enough that they are not truly committed to the counter revolutionary cause. In Algeria, this relationship has deepened even further. Under the influence of characters like René Guillon and his newspaper Lagnos, and the desire to fight an esoteric spiritual war against the cynicalists, some have flocked to the Masonic orders as deep, despite the deeply anti-Masonic rhetoric of the new Integralist monarchy. Furthermore, with Gunon's conversion to Sufism, many Masons and other types are increasingly interested in the native Sufi tarikas or orders. With the AF now in power, this relationship is increasingly troubling, with some proclaiming it the return of Gnosticism and Quietism, both of which are excommunicated heresies. The Tarakas themselves are also worrying because of the rumored links to the Algerian independent groups. It's become clear that some sort of repression is in sort of order. What should we do? Tolerate them? Destroy them? Correct them both. The eldest daughter does not tolerate occultism. That's right. Chief of the Navy. Well, we'll probably go with, honestly, probably Fleet and Ping. As well, we do have some subs. We have 66 of these guys, and we have mostly capital ships, so we want to play to our strengths, right? And so fleet and being is the way we should probably go. Capital ship attack and defense. I could be wrong. I don't know what's the best one at the time of this recording, so. Darlan. We'll just go with decisive battle. Oh. Also, with all this stuff going on, we need more trucks and artillery still, but um, I would like to throw on field hospitals, because manpower is precious. There's only so many men we have here, you know. It looks like, yeah, these guys are getting cut off, which is nice. Guy takes power? Bob, no. Oh. Oh, wow, did they, they literally just took, barely took it. American Union State is struck. Oh, hello? What's the command center, huh? And roll the skies. A strong air force is absolutely vital in order to cover both our fleets in the Mediterranean and support soldiers in the Metropole. Thus, it is vital that we further extend our investments in the air force, subsidizing research and development of planes, and is promising its chief officers continue backing exchange for supporting their line. Absolutely. Big and beautiful. That's how we like them. Le Proletariat. Henri Count of Paris has published Le Proletariat, a short historical and political essay on the working class. Uh, in this essay, the air traces back the origins of the poor working and living conditions of the proletariat to the revolution of 1789, a bourgeois coup that he claims has turned the proud artisans and farmers of old into proletarians by destroying the traditional structures such as guilds and enabling economic liberalism. This chronicles a slow descent into indignity of the working classes over the last century and a half caused by a usurious industrial capitalism and the illegitimate elites. Culminating in the 1919 revolution, an event that consists engineered by nefarious forces exploring the legitimate grievances of the masses. God dang it, come on. Um, Prince Henri that makes the passion of a case of the monarchy the only regime he claims that could truly restore the dignity of the people by upholding tradition and the social doctrine of the church. 
Que le well received in Seoul, thanks to the tower's promotion by the Action Francais and praised by influential clergy already being translated into multiple languages. I'm a publisher abroad, although some were shocked by the violence of Henri's denunciation of capitalism and the bourgeoisie. Curiously, it has been received praise and sometimes genuine but mostly amused from the commune. Maybe it should be nicknamed the Red Count. So how badly are we getting attacked constantly? Because I'll throw you guys back down south if we need to. It looks like you might really need some guys down here. Perhaps. You guys are just getting the crap bean out of you here too. They're really trying to force it really hard. This broken is looking okay. Anti air is recommended. Engineers would be nice. I'm gonna go with this because I want more HP. It hurts our organization a little not a little bit, not too much. You actually get a little more breakthrough. That's interesting. We still have five now. We need more trucks now. Sublime Ottoman Empire Federation. Oh, the Bulgarians not having a good time. Oh, actually, I've been there, so it's kind of cool. So, give me an infantry leader and an organizer. Good, 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 good. And then broad offenses, but only by pushing across a large front can we maintain pressure on the communards. Something we can do better with ever our wealth of new recruitments. We must ensure that our infantry forces understand what is needed to maintain a large offensive, and that our officers are well trained in commanding such operations. Very true. Light tanks, just in case. I don't know if we'll actually use them. Uh, it's a lot of time. We're going to go for 1938 stuff. Light tank equipment, medium tanks. Um, honestly, we'll probably go with that first. There we go. Blue those guys, broad offensive. They dominate the Mediterranean, huh? Get another thing there, which is pretty nice. It's pretty needed, but we need that immediately. Take the air war. I like production costs, um, but the rest of this does not look like I really want it. I want a bonus for 1940s airplane tech, because that's on very, very good. Production is okay. World class navy? All he gives is one dockyard, two dockyards. We're going to need more dockyards. But it's really the planes that are going to help us out. I don't want my subsidized plane production, maybe. Oh, we need to also have two. Uh, get another one. The common airports to follow number own, and as such, we'll need a domination of the skies in order to push them back, and also to protect the Mediterranean supply lines. As such, we should greatly extend our subsidies for planes, making a greater effort to encourage manufacturing to produce higher quantities of the latest model. Wow. I don't know, electrics are good. So, we got two heavy cruisers, too. We've got a lot of the destroyers. I think we need a solid <coughs> light cruiser for now. So, we don't need you. Armor cruiser. Valkyrie cruiser submarines. Uh, that's got a lot to make. Wow. Proof carrier, converted battleship. Dreadnoughts I like, but still. Mm, pre dreadnought, definitely not. Armor cruisers. What is the base on this? 25, 7,500 versus literally half. I really don't know the difference. 14, 31, 18. Nothing. Oh, this is just stuff with guns on them. Oh, these heavy batteries. Um, improved cruisers. I wouldn't mind actually making an actual light cruiser. Just for ship design's sake. Two is good. Cruiser armor three is good. Um, what am I missing here? Fire control. Sonar wouldn't be bad for sub-detection. 15... we can afford for now. Proof type hole, we don't need two of those. We're gonna start working on these. So for now, we can build some more convoys. But we need more naval XP. Second bureau. A new movie has been taken to the French cinemas by storm. Doisimo Bureau, directed by Pierre Billion. Or Billion. Had a numerous production delays and a harsh reception by critics. The commercial success of this thrilling tale of espionage is a surprise. Telling the story of Captain Benoît, a Benoît, played by Jean Morat, sent on a mission by the Second Bureau, or our elusive military intelligence agency, to seize the blueprints of the latest red weapon in the very heart of the commune, this movie has it all. Action, suspense, and of course, romance. Of course. 
The handsome captain is eventually noticed by Commander Counterintelligence, who sends their best agent after him, Elise, true femme fatale. Tasked with seducing the agent, of course, the two fall in love and plan on escaping together. As the Commander realizes, she sacrifices herself and dies in her lover's arms, forcibly, uh, forcefully reminded, reminded of his duty to France. Critics hated it, calling it cheap entertainment, and yet the public loved it, and asked for more, dismissing the rumors that the film received state funding to transform the public image as a secretive and sometimes sinister agency as mere communist propaganda. Could this be the start of a series? Do we see any more volunteers? No. Darn it. Okay. How are you getting beaten up here? Uh, I'm going to go and do this one because we can get better agency slot upgrade times. Improve lighting chances. Eed. Great. Canada supports the federal government. There you go. Today, the Canadian government uh, declared the support for the U.S. states as the uh, United States as a true and only legitimate claimant to the mantle of American leadership in the wake of the Civil War. <coughs> Sounds pretty normal. While stopping short of promising direct military intervention, they've offered to bolster the federal forces with equipment and volunteers as well as an array of military advisors. Advisors that have requested from the French military. The Canadians stated solely that America was required to maintain world order and prevent the dissolution of one of the world's greatest powers in into chaos. We stand ready. Oh, there you go. Get some more divisions now we do can. We got more divisions to send. Welcome, boys, from the deserts of Algeria to the swamps of America. And some hills and mountains, too. The Reds are certainly holding on there. Good. And before I forget, even though it's 1938, I want anti air. I have to have anti air. Oh, so we have anti air. Good. I didn't completely forget about that yet. Very nice. Uh, I forgot about building all this stuff up too. Uh, build. At this point, that's be the last one we'll make for a while. Welsh Union. Oh wow. Scotland has won its independence. That's wait. That's different. You actually are rebelling. He's so handsome. Every time I see him. Oh my god. Anyways, um, British War and American Union state. Ew. Well, Wells is here. Are you guys fighting? No. Authoritarian Democrats. What's happened here? Did they, like... Inter oh my god. No. Broad offenses. I must have another one of those. Even more weekly war support, which is good. But we really started got to be lining through all this stuff here, too, so... Empower the Camelots. Mm, this one gives us more political power. A lot of the Morassian ideologies and emphasis on localism and regional liberties. Although the circumstances of our exile makes it impossible for us to put this into practice, the government has resolved to form regional committees of support of exiles, ready to assume the reins of local administration when the time comes, and to lay the legislative groundwork for the decentralization of the state, which can be put into practice after the liberation. Wales is once. Oh my god. But for how long? Home nation secure independence. Jacques. The radical socialists, authoritarian democrats, secure economy, political chaos, sounds, sounds about right. Directed by the controversial and successful Abel Gantz, or Abel Gantz, a pioneer of filmmaking well known for his historical dramas as well as his ingenious editing and special effects technique. 20 years in the making. I, Q's, is a peculiar war story taking French cinemas by storm, telling the story of love rivals turned friends on the battlefields of the Great War, before uh, the feudal death of one and the slow descent into a shell shock insanity of the other, but is the ending that has most divided the opinion, as a crazed man who had vowed to end all wars temporarily relapses into sanity to find that the world's getting ready for a new great conflict. He springs into action in a supernatural storm, causing the millions of dead of the Valkyrie, regardless of their nationality, to rise from the grave and punch a living for the foolish obsession with the mutual destruction. All over Europe, the dead of all countries here is called United March on, creating mass panic and preventing another war. Accused of pacifism, of soling the memory of a war heroes by some, praised for his skill by others, Gantz escaped censorship due to his links with the veterans associations. Indeed, many veterans were employed during the filming of the movie, in particular many Gula Casse's broken faces for the final finale. Great finale. Uh, the dead knight, the dead might not rise and march on to prevent a second Valkyrie, but those disfigured by the last war want to have their voices heard as the war frenzy in our nation rages on. They're coming to get you, Wilhelm. There's millions of them now, and break the forest states. Oh, I'm, I'm part of the Camelots. The AF's paramilitary 
and youth group. The Camelot's Du Roy had long been an invaluable asset of the party, dominating street fights against many unsavory elements and teaching Morassian values to the French youth. Now they've taken power, we can empower the Camelot's within the government, granting them extensive powers and settling on a cleaner purpose for the organization. Not bad. But now we're going to use our uh, stuff here and make sure we get I start producing some planes. That'd be nice. Mm, but I think I'll end it there. Sacred Dean of the Pacific Ocean Club. Sacred, oh my god, they're thick. Henry Wallace. Social Democrats, well, would you look at that? But regardless, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. As uh, so we'll continue on uh, having a good old time as the Kingdom of France, helping out some other people, and uh, trying to get really ready for the invasion of the Communist France. Or Red France. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.